get to it right now. This is the brief, uh, I think, a thousand word explanation of reading session. So I won't read this out loud. I'll leave it for you to read. I'll just point out the highlight and um, to tell you what it's not. And, you know, I know that you know how to read. I'm not teaching you how to read in this reading session. The assumption for these transfer level classes are that you know how to read. Um, so, um, so what is it for? It's uh, um, the biggest thing that um, online classes are not really good at is, and, and, and I'm really happy to see a lot of questions in the chat and I'm really grateful for people who are here in real time and engaged and asking questions. Um, and, but if you watch these recordings, you see that it's uh, mostly me talking and um, and, and, and I've uh, uh, tried other types of uh, virtual class sessions where I wasn't really recording and I was trying to create space for people to just um, ask questions. And one time I was just basically literally sitting in a virtual class session for an hour doing nothing and no one asked any questions. <laughs> and, um, and I think, so this is what I'm saying, uh, you know, in a face-to-face -face class, a lot of that interaction comes naturally, organically, uh, we are human beings, are social creatures, um, but in an online setting, it um, it's hard to encourage that in an organic way. I can always make something a required assignment, and I really have aversion to that. And uh, that's <laughs> without describing all the other ways that I've tried. So um, what I thought would be a good way to have a natural setting where people can participate is uh, the reading session. And real, so the material that I have for reading is, it's just, uh, that's, the, uh, that's the, the backbone to which I'm hoping to attach this interaction to. There's something that we can read it through and uh, I can read some part and I can take volunteers to read some sections. And I'm hoping that'll be a good way to uh, get people to um, have something to talk about really. Um, so, and uh, it's, uh, I think the, I got the idea from some of the classes that I really enjoyed. Uh, when I was in college, uh, I, I, I was a physics and math major, and I actually tried really hard not to take any other humanities classes. I avoided any classes that made me write papers, avoided, I even avoided other science classes. I uh, didn't really want to take biology, to, so I took biophysics class to satisfy life science requirement. Um, but, but one set of classes that I really took a lot of was a senior level Greek uh, classes, uh, as in Greek, uh, the ancient Greek languages. Some of them are, well, Adic Greek is what they made you take, and then you branch off to poet, uh, poetry, epic, and um, other uh, prose. And what a lot of these classes do is um, you're just reading through the text, uh, most of because um, <laughs> there isn't much point in the professor just lecturing about how to read the Greek. Uh, the way you learn how to read Greek is to just read. And um, so, you know, we are doing this in English. We are not doing it in, in Greek, <laughs> thankfully. And so, you know, you already know how to read English. You're not learning how to read English, but um, the closest analog I can probably draw is something called the close reading of the text. Uh, we are not doing quite that because a true close reading is quite slow. Um, you can, a text like this probably takes two hours to do a close reading if it's something that's worth doing close reading of. Um, and so we're not doing quite a close reading, but what we are doing is we are, we'll be reading the text out loud that'll naturally slow us down and, um, and give, provide some room for people to ask questions, for me to comment on things and just do that. So. Um, so, um, so yeah, so for each reading session, I have a text selected and do I save an hour? Yeah, so if it's an hour long, then 
it's gonna be um, actually too long. <laughs> we'll probably get through a quarter of the text before we run out of time. Um, as it is today, I'm pretty sure I'm gonna get through a quarter of what I have selected. Um, so the goal at the reading session isn't really to finish reading. Uh, uh, so if we don't finish everything, I think that's perfectly fine. It's uh, um, so uh, um, so yeah. <laughs> so, um, so no one, especially me, <laughs> no one's gonna feel bad if we don't finish reading the assigned reading in the reading session. And the material in the reading session, it'll change it from session to session. So what I have selected for today, it uh, frankly has very little to do what we are covering in the class. Um, it does have something to do with laws of physics, which is why I think it'd be good to read through in the first week. Um, in a future reading session, I might uh, choose a portion of the textbook. Uh, so um, it might be a portion that I think uh, is worth reading for everyone. <laughs> uh, or it might be something else. Uh, so what I can tell you is that whatever it is that I'm selecting to uh, for us to go through in these reading sessions, you will see it linked from here. And you see this icon looks a little bit, well, yeah, it says external tool. And the external tool that we are using is something called the hypothesis. Um, it allows you to um, do things like highlighting stuff. And I think it gets shared with the, uh, with the class. And uh, so I think most of the time I'm gonna um, be posting a PDF, even when it's from our own textbook, which is available online in a fairly good format. I'm still gonna excerpt a PDF to upload it here because I, I have my own reasons. I'll maybe explain that later. Um, so, um, so, so yeah, it, it, whatever it is that we are reading in the reading session, it'll be, oops, uh, it'll be posted in the modules uh, in this particular um, module item. So uh, if uh, somehow, it's because uh, most of the reading session won't be recorded. So if you're not able to attend um, <laughs> and um, then you are not missing out on any required material. Um, for really two reasons. One, the selected reading itself might not have anything to do with the required material in the first place. And two, even when it is directly related to required material, you will at least know what passage we were reading on. So um, the reason I don't record a reading session is because um, for you, someone to benefit from the interaction, you kind of have to be here. It, the, watching the recording, I don't think it really benefits you anyway. So, you know, if you had time to watch the recording, maybe you should just read the section. So um, so let me do it this way. Um, so for this, uh, uh, any questions before we move on to any questions other than on peer reviews, which I'll cover next week. Um, any questions uh, on, uh, well, anything else before um, we move on to reading session? Um, reading a little bit. Um, I see a question in the chat. I will address it at an opportune time. I, don't think uh, right now is the right time to address it, other than to say you can read the syllabus to find an answer to that question. And, and I'll address that maybe in the week two or three when it's, I think, right time to address it. Oh. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> if you are in that, you should ask, and I will tell you if I'm going to address it later. <laughs> Okay, I'm asking any other questions. So now for this first time, let me just uh, read it through for the portion where I'm just gonna read in first a few paragraphs. I will actually leave that in the recording and I'm going to stop the recording uh, at some point and call for volunteers to, uh, I, we probably have enough time to take one or two volunteer, call for volunteers to, um, participate <laughs> at this uh, first reading session. Um, so, okay, so let me, uh, I'm gonna put this link in the chat so that um, if you want to have it, um, if you want to have it 
uh, at this um, in your um, own web browser, you can. Uh, in fact, you know, I, I so while in the recorded portion, I will keep the uh, share the screen on. But when I stop the recording, I'm actually gonna unshare my screen so that you can have you um, you can view <laughs> um, the material in the way that works best for you. So, so yeah, let me um, just to read through some beginning part of it and uh, um, I'll uh, look for volunteers. <laughs> so uh, so this uh, material, uh, maybe brief explanation of material, it comes from something called the Feynman Lectures. And um, it is actually available to uh, read for free. It didn't used to be, but forget when it changed, but they posted it on this website so anyone can read it for free. And uh, Technically, this uh, comes from uh, material that's for engineering physics. <laughs> so most of the chapters in this book, we won't read through because it requires calculus. Um, but this first chapter I thought would be good. Um, doesn't involve a lot of math and it, I, I thought it explained some things well. So. So we'll just uh, read through this first chapter. And if there are any other chapters that's good for us to read, I'll select it in future reading session. But I'll you know, review it ahead of time to make sure that it doesn't involve calculus. Um, so, so with that brief introduction, I'll just uh, read for the next few minutes um, this chapter one of that lectures, uh, which titled Atoms in Motion. And uh, this Photo. It, it's a photo of the uh, blackboard that uh, he was using. For, it, so the origin of this book is it comes from his lectures. <laughs> so uh, uh, let me actually, yeah, okay. I think that makes it look a little better. Okay, so um, section 1-1, one -one, introduction. Um, I'll just read <laughs> without, uh, I'll try to refrain from commentary. Um, this two-year course in physics is presented from the point of view that you, the reader, are going to be a physicist. This is not necessarily the case, of course, uh, but that is what every professor in every subject assumes. If you are going to be a physicist, you will have a lot to study. 200 years of the most rapidly developing field of knowledge that there is, so much knowledge, in fact, that you might think that you cannot learn all of it in four years. And truly you cannot, you will have to go to graduate school too, if you're going to become a physicist. Surprisingly enough, in, in spite of the tremendous amount of work that has been done for all this time, it is possible to condense the enormous mass of results to a large extent, that is to find laws which summarizes all of all our knowledge. Even so, the laws are so hard to grasp that it is unfair to you to start exploring this tremendous subject without some kind of map or outline of the relationship of one part of the subject of science to another. Following these preliminary remarks, the first three chapters will therefore outline the relation of physics to the rest of the sciences, the relations of the sciences to each other and the meaning of science to help us develop a feel for the subject. And um, because we're not gonna be reading that part, if you go to the table of content, he's talking about these um, chapters that we won't read, but. You can if you want to. <laughs> you might ask why we cannot teach physics uh, by just uh, giving the basic laws on page one and then showing how they work in all possible circumstances as we do in Euclidean geometry where we state the axioms and then make all sorts of deductions. Uh, you might have seen an aspect of this in your high school geometry class uh, when they do proofs. Um, oh, I see a question. Let's see. I have a link to the full PDF. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, you can link to the. Oh, hmm, then 
it's possibly an illegal copy, but it's fine. I mean, you know, it's available for free here. So I think you can make a fair use argument that you're not hurting the commercial market for the... <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much for posting. Um, okay, so uh, parenthesis. So not satisfied to learn physics in four years. You want to learn it in four minutes. <laughs> we cannot do it this in this way for two reasons. First, we do not yet know all the basic laws. There is an ever-expanding frontier of ignorance. And uh, this lecture was delivered in the 60s. And uh, I have to say 50 plus years later, that is actually still largely true. We still do not yet know all the basic laws. There's some things that we know more, but we still don't think we know all the laws of physics. Second, the correct statement of the laws of physics involves some very unfamiliar ideas which require advanced mathematics for their description. Therefore, one needs a considerable amount of preparatory training even to learn what the words mean. No, it is not possible to do it that way. You can only do it piece by piece. And I just want to remind you the audience for this is people going into engineering and uh, physical sciences, people who have already taken some calculus. <laughs> and he's telling that group of students that they still need more advanced mathematics for full description. And actually, that is the challenge in teaching conceptual physics. And that's really why I don't cover general relativity, because um, it is harder to teach physics with uh, less math. It's easier to teach physics with all that math. Um, let me read the next two, two paragraphs and then I'm going to stop the recording and hopefully take maybe one or two volunteers to take us to until the end of the hour. Um, each piece or part of the whole of nature is always merely an approximation to the complete truth or the complete truth so far as we know it. In fact, everything we know is only some kind of approximation because we know that we do not know all the laws as yet. Therefore, things must be learned only to be unlearned again or more likely to be corrected. And that's still true. <laughs> the principle of science, the definition almost is the following. The test of all knowledge is experiment. Experiment is the sole judge of scientific truth. But what is the source of knowledge? Where do the laws that are to be tested come from? Experiment itself helps to produce these laws in the sense that it gives us hints. But also needed is imagination to create from these hints the great generalizations to guess at the wonderful, simple, but very strange patterns uh, beneath them all. And then to experiment, to check again, whether we have made the right guess. This uh, imagining process is so difficult that there is a division of labor in physics. There are theoretical physicists who imagine, deduce, and guess at new laws, but do not experiment. And then there are experimental physicists who experiment, imagine, deduce, and guess. And uh, before I stop the recording and call for volunteer, I want to point out that Richard Feynman, who's doing this lecture, he's one of the theoretical physicists. So I want you to take in the importance of him saying that test of all knowledge is experiment. Experiment is the sole judge of scientific truth. And that's coming from a theoretical physicist. So, you know, it's not biased. My own background is an experiment. I'm an experimental physicist, so I'm biased for experiment, but I'm quoting Feynman, who is a theoretical physicist, to, to say that um, experiment is the sole judge of scientific truth. That's the philosophical paradigm that we are working in. So um, I'm gonna stop the recording here so that um, I can call for volunteers and wrap up this remaining five minutes with someone other than me speaking. Um, those of you joining by recording the video, thanks for joining so far. Bye. See you next week, maybe.